Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Rent Arb Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about comic books I've read, where you can find those comic books, and Kickstarters, Mailbox, all, so all sorts of fun stuff. <laughs> okay, so first off, uh, you may notice I'm in a Spider-Man shirt, so I thought I'd wear a Spider-Man shirt in honor of reading Spider-Geddon. Spider-Geddon here is... Spider-Geddon is written by Christos Gage, based on a story by Dan Slott. Has pencilers Jorge Molina and Carlo Bar Barberi, Todd Nock, Stefano Caselli, and Joey Vasquez. With anchors Jorge Molina, Jay Leaston, Craig Ewan, Roberto Poggi, Jose Marzan Jr. and Todd Nock, Stefano Caselli, and Joey Vasquez, with color artist David Curiel and letterer VCs Travis Lanham. Cover art here by Jorge Molina. So, uh, as you know, this is a Marvel book, and uh, recently, or quite a while ago, I read the uh, Spider Verse Omnibus. It's a pretty big, big book, big old book. This one was pretty cool. Um, so the uh, inheritors, the people that suck out the life forces of spider people, uh, got out of their um, radioactive, toxic earth and uh, come back, and we're trying to trying to uh, get on the uh, Spider-Man eating train again. And uh, Doc Ock, who led most of the team. And then we also had a uh, the Spider-Man from the uh, video game universe here. That was pretty cool. I liked him. He was pretty cool. And uh, there was a uh, one called Sp Spider's Man, and that was a whole bunch of spiders that uh, had the essence and memories of Peter Parker and just looked like a man. So it was millions and millions of spiders, all like conformed and hived up to uh, the shape of a man. Pretty cool. I'd love to see that in a movie. That'd be some insane effects and uh, all that. And then, yeah, then we had a Cowboy Spider-Man. Lots of weird stuff. Let's see here. Crazy good stuff. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to find you some good stuff to show. So, yeah. Um, and then uh, Miles Morales, he got the... Uh, he got some cosmic spider powers. That was pretty cool. Shoot. I was just on the page and now I lost it. Anyway, a lot of cool stuff. A lot of Spider-Man. A lot of Spider-Verse stuff going on. Really cool. I liked it. And uh, then you got these guys here that are uh, pattern makers. And they weave the uh, web of life. So that was an interesting way to do it. Let's see. Oh, there's some cosmic... Miles Morales right there. He looks pretty cool. That was awesome. And uh, Spider-Gwen with Punk Rock Spider. Spider-Punk. Really cool lineup. Oh yeah, there's a whole whole spread of all the spiders. So yeah, I liked it. I enjoyed it. There's even a spider cop with the mustache on. And an Aunt May Spider Maiden. Spider-Ma'am. Something really weird. There's a really cool page with lots of spider people on it. So yeah, they're fighting these inheritors. The whole plot line is about these inheritors. Uh, like like uh, the last the omnibus I read. Um, and so these inheritors suck out the life forces of spiders and they find out that uh, that was a genetic trait that was put in there by their father and he was a bad person and uh, so they decide with these cloning tubes of Otto Octavius's uh, that he had uh, the superior Spider-Man, Otto Octavius, had a bunch of cloning tubes, and he was planning on just recloning himself if he ever died or whatever. And uh, the inheritors wanted this stuff to reclone if if they ever died. So uh, all the Spider-Men got together, and, and rather than beating the inheritors this time. They uh, decided to reclone them as babies without the uh, hunger for spider essences. And uh, 
decided that there's the Aunt May Spider Ma'am. She's going to raise them on another planet, on a on her Earth. So that's that's a weird way of doing it, if you ask me. But whatever. Uh, it was entertaining, fun read. And then there's the the Western Spider Man. That's pretty cool. And uh, the Web Slinger is what they call him instead of a gunslinger. So yeah, overall it was a fun read. Really fun to get back into the Spider-Verse universes and see what's going on there once in a while. Uh, uh, yeah, I do. I lose touch with uh, with Marvel and DC a lot. I used to be really heavy into the Marvel, and uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, I just got tired of it. It felt like uh, the stories kept restarting, and as someone who's been reading it for as long as I have, it, it really sucks to have the story restart over and over again. So every once in a while I just jump in when uh, when a favorite writer or artist or character is doing something cool, I'll jump in. Other than that, I'm not really huge into the Marvel and DC anymore. So Spider Geddon, awesome read. I do recommend it. It was some good stuff. Um, check it out. Uh, you could get this at your local comic shop. I'm sure they could special it if they don't have it on the shelf already. But I found this on the shelf. It was a good one, good find. And, uh, you know, I had a bunch of uh, Christmas and birthday money, so I picked this up during that time. It's been in my read pile a long time, obviously, if it's a pickup from Christmas. So there's that. And uh, next I'm on to a comic called Super Scouts, number three. Super Scouts is one that I found on the Kickstarters, and uh, I think the story's wrapped up in number three. It was really cool. Uh, uh, it's not even a story that I don't normally get into. Uh, it's it's kind of a Power Rangers. So there was the a bunch of actors, and they were on a show that was similar to Power Rangers. They they get into um, oh. First, let me knock out the credits for you. So the credits here, it's written by Ryan Little, art by Bruno Oliviera, and it is a Plastic Swords Press creation from, edited by Cody Columbine. And yes, there, right there, you can check it out. In that green section at the very bottom is my name on the thank you page, Gary Bratner of Renton Art Studios Comics. Awesome. I love it. Love thank you pages. That's an awesome side, uh, side thing to the uh, Kickstarters. So in this world, um, we have we have these people that were are actors, and they used to play in a, a series called the Super Scouts. And what the Super Scouts did is they basically fought these things, these actors in costumes, you know, like Power Rangers do. But the twist on this is that it's like Galaxy Quest. Um, the actors find out that it's real, that there actually is uh, monsters and life forces and things that uh, want to conquer Earth and, and that they could actually get superpowers. It's pretty cool. Um, so they find out that their uh, producer was actually a person from another planet and he came here to protect the planet. And the way he found a living after he got to this planet was making the TV show Super Scouts. And so he came up with uh, the show as a way to support his living there. And so these people that, end that were actors ended up actually becoming Super Scouts and had to protect the planet. Really cool stuff. Um, there's even a part where they they make a robot, and it's one of those robots that uh, separates off into the robots of itself, uh, dinosaur robots, but when they join together, they make one giant robot that they get inside. Well, I don't know, I'm not sure, familiar with the uh, art style, but, or what, you know, what it's called. I love this artist too, by the way, um, let's see. Yeah, I love this star artist Bruno Oliveira. Bruno Oliveira. Uh, his art style makes me think of uh, some Stephen Yen or uh, Lee Weeks kind of kind of scratchiness, uh, like Jay Lee. Yeah, Jay Lee, 
Lee Weeks, Steven Yen, that kind of cool stuff. I was pretty impressed with it. Uh, I really loved it. I am definitely, I'm going to have to borrow, lend this to my friend Brooke Adams, who, uh, who actually lived in Japan for a little while, so he, he might really find these books interesting. I'm going to have to lend them to him and uh, see what he thinks. There's some cool stuff right there. Check out that page. Really cool. Uh, so Super Scouts, yes, it is completed, issues one through three. And uh, if I can find links to where you can buy that, I will post post them up on my Twitters underneath this and uh, in the uh, show notes on the YouTube page. So Super Scouts by Plastic Sword Press, really cool. I loved it. Great stuff. Um, they just had a Kickstarter for a thing called Section Seven. I wish I would have uh, been able to review this in time to share that, but I did share it a lot on my previous episodes. So hopefully that did okay. Um, Super Scouts number three. Loved it. Recommend getting it for yourself, especially for those of you who like uh, the anime and the Power Rangers kind of stuff. Really good. Loved it. Super Scouts. Number three. And next up is one called Maybe Someday. This one is from A Wave Blue World. Really cool. Um, ooh, it even came with a sticker. Obviously, that's going to be going on my uh, on the lid to my comic book boxes. Maybe someday. Maybe someday. It's got way too many creators to name off. It is. This is an anthology, which I I have really not delved into uh, anthologies a whole lot, but I am really jumping on board lately. Uh, pretty cool stuff. So, let's see, one, two, this has got about 20 different stories in it. Check out that credits page. Good stuff on that. Um, so, maybe someday, maybe I'll just uh, rattle off a whole bunch of names and see how it goes. So we've got Ryan Katie, Mike Feehan, Troy Pateri, Kurt Pyers, and Rockwell White. Valentine D. Landro, Oliver Mertz, Matt Coetzer, Connor Knudsen, Isaac Goodhart, Gab Contreras, and Shafel Peterson, Taylor Esposito. Oh, I'm recognizing some of these names. Steve Niles. Oh, yeah, definitely recognize that name. Chris Mitten, Brennan Wagner, Cheryl Rodriguez. Matt Kroetzer and Eric Palicki. Oh, I definitely know that name. Jane Thompson, Matt Kroetzer, and Jono Diesner, Diener, Sebastian uh, Perez, Sean Strubel, Jim Campbell, Ren Famous, Josh Hood, Chris Sotomayor, Paul Haskell, Taylor Esposito again, Greg Anderson Elise, Elise, Anthony Height, Studio Sky Tiger, Jim Campbell again, Ethan Sachs, Anthony Bresnikin, Jeff Edwards, Andy Poole, Cardinal Ray, Michael Morecki, Philip Sevy, ooh, Philip Sevy, fellow Utah, just like me. Gab Contreras again. Contreras. Shefan Peterson. Shefel Peterson. Matt Kroetzer. A lot of repeats. Michael Cooperman. And Daniel Kibblesmith. Emily Pearson. Taylor Esposito. Robert Lee. John McFarlane. Oliver Mertz. Taylor Esposito, Stephanie Phillips, Zoe Good, Thoroughgood, Troy Pateri, Natasha Alterisi, Martin Simons, Jim Campbell, Darren Burnett, Marika Cresta, Gab Contreras, Sheffield Peterson, DC Hopkins, Regina L. Sawyer, Kreese Lee, Soyoung Yi, 
Cardinal Ray, Joe Glass, I recognize him, Yasmin Ling, Leong, Gab Contreras, Chef L. Peterson, Cardinal Ray, Joe Glass, oh wait, I just started that one over again, Max Bennis, Chris Peterson, Gab Contreras, Chef L. Peterson, Mika Myers, Micah Myers, Erica Schultz, Stelladia, Ian Tags, Cardinal Ray, Hagai Pilevsky, Darren Ock, Mayday Trip, Tripe, Taylor Esposito, Aubrey Sitterson, Nick Pyle, Taylor Esposito, Mario Candelaria, Sean Daly, oh, I recognize him. Uh, I think he did one called Ogre that I read. Alyssa Quitney, Morissette, Kelly Fitzpatrick, Matt Cro Kroetzer, Joe Karamanga, Bobby Timmy, Micah Myers, Russ Wooten, Matt Miner, Rod Reyes, Jim Campbell, Ryan Ferreira, Ferrier, George Cambadeus, Oliver Mertz, and Matt Kroetzer. Is there another page of credits? Nope, that is it. So, maybe someday. Um, maybe someday was a bunch of stories, an anthology of stories that took place in the future. And, uh, man, it was an awesome read. Uh, if you are a fan of those uh, Love, Death, and Robots cartoons that Netflix did, you should be buying anything that a wave blue world does because they've been doing a lot of anthologies and uh man this was so awesome uh each story just blew me away There's such good artwork amazing storylines and uh some of them were one page some of them were 10 pages it was just insane let me see I'll throw in so yeah we had we had stories about aliens and they would come to earth and find robots and we had we had space stories, astronauts and stuff doing stuff out there in space. And we had end of the world with the world grown over with plants. So many good stuff. Um, oh man, and uh, yeah, let me see if I can find this one. It, like, oh yeah, here's some really cool stuff. It looks very watercolory painted. So many different unique art styles, so many amazing art styles and stories. Everything from the, the super cartoony to the super detailed. Oh yeah, look at that. That is insane, right there. So yeah, I, I highly recommend um, reading Maybe Someday find it. Uh, I will post links to where you can find Maybe Someday and Maybe Someday uh, A Wave Blue World are they're actually running a Kickstarter right now for um, Dead Beats 2 and Dead Beats 2 is also an anthology so Maybe Someday check it out uh, you could probably even get it with your uh, if you kickstarted Dead Beats um, yeah really good anthology loved it so much I'm so glad I backed it. Oh, I think I'm... Yes. That is right. I'm even on the thank you page right there above that post-it. So, yeah. check. It says, Gary Brantner of Renard Studios Comics. That's what I go by everywhere I am on the interwebs. Now I don't need that, so I can toss that. Yes, I loved Maybe Someday. The uh, paper quality of this felt really cool holding it and stuff. I'm loving it. Glad it's in my collection. And I'm glad uh, I'm, I'm backing Deadbeats 2, and I have Deadbeats 1 next up in my read pile. So you will get a full review of that next week. And I love that it came with stickers. Awesome stuff. I even have one that has the Deadbeats sticker on it. So that's cool. Um, so that's the end of my reviews. Now I'm going to move on to Mailbox. Yes, I've got some really good stuff in my Mailbox this week. Um, I got a book called Cyber Team Alpha. Check that out. 
Cyber Team Alpha is one I backed on Kickstarter also. It looks like I've got a little silver signature in the bottom. That's cool. And this one came with some really cool posters. Wow. Paper quality on that is amazing. That's the exact same cover as the one I held up, but very big. And this one came with stickers as well. I got Cyber Team Alpha on that one. That one says Sovereign Comics. That's who created this one. I love their uh, business card too. It's a nice perfect square. Kind of, uh, kind of cool, like a coaster. And there's a Sovereign Teen Alpha, but it's a white sticker, so you can't see it until you stick it on something black. And it looks like it came with the trading card. That one's really cool. Oh, and this poster. This poster is nuts. Look how good that is. That is so cool. I can't wait to hang that one up. I'm going to be hanging it up. Right there, I got a blank spot. Maybe I'll hang it up before I even read it. That way it's already behind me the next time I do the review on that one. And I, they even have their own Sovereign Comics bags that the mail comes in. So that was really cool to come in. Uh, my post lady commented on that. She kind of annoys me though, but she's she's like, oh, looks like you got some more comics, Gary. That's that's how she sounds. And this is what else I also got in the mail. I got this huge box. Scout Battle Damaged Comics. Uh, basically what this is, is you order a box of comics and uh, you get 20 or so uh, comics that they think are damaged. I don't even know. I haven't opened this yet. Let me slice this guy open. Whoa. Without slicing my fingers. So, uh, Scout Comics, they had an advertisement. I saw a little uh, YouTube snippet of uh, them explaining it. And I thought, man, I gotta get on some of that because a bunch of uh, Scout Comics on the cheap uh, that I could try out some things I didn't even know. Who knows, maybe I'll like something that I had no idea even existed. Ooh, gotta be really careful so I don't cut myself on. Okay, so this says, Dear Collector, not long ago there was a battle near the hometown of Mintville, which was the home of many storytellers. A strange and invisible menace known as the known to attack any travelers who were en route to this close to perfect land. The citizens of Mintville devised a means to strive together in order to defend against the dangerous phantasm. Blah, 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 blah. That's a lot of story. Just to say, hey, here's some damaged comics. Check them out. Anyway, Scout Comics. Uh, I'm a big fan of Scout Comics. Love everything they're doing. So, I got, whoa. Bubble wrapped even. That's kind of crazy for... Okay, so I could see here, there is a few that have a couple little bent corners right there. See, not too big of a deal really. I got the source. Oh, and they wrote a D over the barcode so that they know they're, they're damaged, is what they're saying. It doesn't matter to me. I will still collect them. I will still put them in my... I'll probably even bag and board them, put them in my collection. So I got some cool stuff. Tinkers. Oh wow, that is an amazing cover. The Shepherd, right here. Check that out. That one's one of those bent covers, or bent corners. Oh well. With a D over the barcode. Xenober 5, Xenober 4, Xenober 3, and Xenober 1. Oh, so I'm just missing a two on that. That wouldn't be too hard to go online and find it. These are a lot of, uh, it looks like a dragon on that one. Solar Flare, three, two, and one, and three. Whoa, I got, what the? Okay, so I got, oh, wow. So I got a Solar Flare three, and a Solar Flare three. These are apparently two different covers for the same book. Solar Flare 2, and two Solar Flare 1s. I got one that looks like a raw cover. That's pretty cool looking, or 
Something like that. That is a really cool cover, though. Oh, this is a New York Comic Con exclusive. Wow. Neat. That's actually how I'm planning on doing my uh, next Kickstarter exclusive. What else have I got in here? Another pack of bubble wrap. So this is a good deal. Man, anytime they do these damaged, battle damaged boxes, I am in. That is pretty cool. I've got a really shiny cover of Shepard right here. What is that? Oh, I got a timer to go pick up my boy, but it's... His school is out now. Wow, that's so shiny I can't even show you. Check it out. Oh, so shiny. Sabretooth Dan. Oh, man. That one looks cool. And it looks like Hench Girl on the back. Wretches. Ooh, that's one I've actually read before. Uh, digitally. Wretches, one. Mindbender. That's a really cool cover. This doesn't have a title on the... Oh, Phantom Serial Killer on the back. So, maybe that's the same book. Phantom Serial Killer. Internocked. Wow, I, I really got a good haul here. Murder Hobo. That's a good title. Wow. <laughs> Murder Hobo. The Mall. Looks like an Adventures in Babysitting cover. Hench Girl. Oh yeah, I've, I've been curious about that one. Crucified. Welcome to Paradise. That's a cool art style. Smoketown. Looks like a robot and a dude at a bar. Nope, that's a that's a soldier. And Stabity Bunny. Wow, that is an awesome haul. So yes, I can't wait to put these in the read pile. Check them out. That'll be a good one. And that is a really cool box, too. So, yeah, it's not too bad. A few bent corners here and there. No big deal. Awesome collection. And uh, so that brings me to the end of the mailbox show. Uh, this is something I picked up. As you know, I've been getting a lot of comic books from Kickstarter lately, so I had to pick up two new boxes this is the, these are the boxes that I keep comic books in. As you know, I stick stickers on the top to depict what is inside them. These are um, hefty. You can just pick these up at uh, your local hardware store or Wally World. And uh, they hold comic books amazingly. Here, I'll show you how they look. This is what it looks like with comics inside it. As you can see, that's, this is my DC box. And I stickered the lid so that I know this is my DC box. It has a whole bunch of DC product inside. Superman inside it. Harley Quinn inside it. Uh, obviously, some of you might not like that they're clear. Because they could get sun damaged or whatever. I'm not too big a stickler on that kind of thing. And this is a kind of a dark room. So, yeah, that's what I do. I get got So, I got new boxes. Uh, two new boxes. These are to hold... Uh, um, well, my uh, X Factor collection is kind of growing too big, and my Indie, my Kickstarter collection is growing too big, so I need new boxes for those. And, uh, yeah. So now I got new boxes for those. Now, let's move on to the next section of the show that I call the Campaign Corner. This is where I talk about Kickstarters that I'm backing and Kickstarter projects that you should know about. So, if you have a Kickstarter project or Indiegogo project going right now that you think that I should know about, hit me up and I will talk about it on my Kickstarter corner. Or campaign corner, as, you, as it is, because it's not just Kickstarters, it's also Indiegogos. So, I will start with, um, let's see, what day is it today? It is June 3rd, so... Lafay here ends on June 9th. It's done. I can't talk about that one. Section 7. Ooh, Section 7 here is uh, from the same creators as... Um, no, maybe not. 
I thought Section 7 was from Plastic Sword Press, the, uh, the ones that did Super Scouts, but I guess not. Okay, Section 7, Cases of the Strange and Unnatural. Explore a collection of case files based on the experiences of detectives encountering the unexplained. 164 pages of perfect bound graphic novel. It's got a sketchy, art, loose art style. I really liked it. Check out Section 7 on Kickstarter until June 3rd, which is today. So it's probably got hours to go on it. You better check it out as soon as pause right now and go check out Section 7, Cases of the Strange and Unnatural on Kickstarter. Starlight 1 through 3 is on Kickstarter until June 3rd today. Starlight is one that I'm backing and I love it. I love the story, I love the art style. The star art style is just, it's got insane colors, really fluid art style to it. It is about a pair of uh, super raver heroes that have kind of retired. They were kid heroes and now that they're teenagers, they're done being heroes out of the hero spotlight and a reporter finds them and he wants to do a story on them and at that same moment, aliens come, kidnap the mom, and they end up in space also. It is a 24-page comic of trans-dimensional spider wizards, space pirate cats, and has-been superheroes. And has-been reporter. So, check out Starlight 1 through 3 on Kickstarter until today. Damsel from Distress 1 through 3 is on Kickstarter until June 5th. It is a smash hit comic book series about uh, a hotshot secret agent battles the ghosts of her past. D&D meets the man from UNCLE. So if you like D&D, James Bond, Charles, Charlie's Angels, or Zelda, put them all in a blender and you've got Damsel from Distress 1 through 3. It is a, this is 48 comic books or 48 pages all in one um, because they're doing two issues at the same time two and three I don't know why they're doing that just because they're done and COVID probably screwed up their timeline so they thought let's just put them out all at the same time so check out Damsel from Distress 1 through 3 on Kickstarter right now till June 5th Cuddles a last chance crime story for an oversized crime one shot from the creative team behind Transmissions, 32 pages. It'll be 44 pages after all the bonus content. It is a great art style. I love it. Cuddles, uh, life ain't too different. He's got a cushy job collecting money for the local crime boss, but he's partnered up with the crime boss's son, and things start to go sideways. So check out Cuddles on Kickstarter right now till June 6th. Oh, here's the Axeman Collected Edition. An operative hunts patient zeros to eradicate dangerous new viruses before the plague spread. Imagine that, a plague story during a pandemic, right? Because pandemics suck. So imagine if somebody could end it before the pandemic even started. This is 105 pages. It has a rad art style and lots of previews on the Kickstarter. Um, Axeman Collected Edition, this one is done by Plastic Sword Press, the people who brought to you uh, the Super Scouts. So yes, as soon as I'm done making this video, I'm going to jump on there and back this one because I was so impressed with Super Scouts, uh, I, I want to see anything these guys make at Sword, Plastic Sword Press. So check out the Axeman Collected Edition on Kickstarter until June 10th. Cult Heroes. Cult Heroes is another one I'm back in. Very awesome stuff. It is a comic book about killing superheroes. So uh, this is for issues one and two. It is 24 pages each. The uh, art style on this is insane. Uh, it's Man, I wish I could replicate the way this guy makes comic books because it is awesome. Um, it is for mature readers. And that's exactly what it is. I read the first issue, did a review on that. If you want to go scroll through my uh, episodes, sorry, got an itch. Uh, so if you want to scroll through my episodes, check out how I how I uh, reviewed Cult Heroes because I loved it. I, it was amazing, and I can't wait to get issue two. 
Um, good stuff, really good stuff. And uh, Cult Heroes issues one and two are on Kickstarter until June 11th. The Deadliest Bouquet is on Kickstarter right now. In 1998, three estranged sisters, trained by their Nazi hunting mom, come together to solve the murder of their mom. Uh, Carola Borelli is the artist on the series. She's one of my favorites. She draws Destiny New York and Love University. She also did some OBS comics. Really good art style. Love it. Um, I'm backing Deadliest Bouquet because I love that art style and uh, this really interested me. It's 120 pages of comic. I mean, that is like three or four issues all in one. So check out Deadliest Bouquet on Kickstarter right now. They've got awesome stickers and pins and stuff like that. It's on Deadliest Bouquet is on Kickstarter until June 15th. Here's one that I just barely added to my list, but uh, man. The Obsidian Spindle Saga. This is not a comic book. This is a set of four novels and they're uh, fantasy portal novels. I don't know what portal fantasy means. Um, okay, four pa portal fantasy novels filled with fairy tales, mythology, action, and romance. So those are a bunch of things I like. Fairy tales, mythology, action, and romance. I, I love a good romance book. Some of my favorites are Marjorie Liu, Gina Showalter, and uh, Maggie Shane. And so I'm right, I'm up there, I'm right there with the romance books, check it out. Um, he's got four books out. This is from Russell Nol Nohelty. The Wicked Witch, The Sleeping Beauty, The Red Rider, and The Fairy Queen are the four books he's got. The first ten chapters are free to read on the Kickstarter, there's a link. Um, I'm going to be reading those this weekend because I want to check them out. And uh, man, I would really love to get hard copies of all four of these books. So. I'm going to be, think long and hard on this. I have until June 17th to uh, make a decision if I'm going to back this or not. And yeah, because it's it's pretty expensive uh, back to get all four physical copies. So we'll see what I can do budget-wise. So check out the Obsidian Spindle Saga on Kickstarter right now till June 17th. Lethal Challengers Cat Number 1 is on Indiegogo right now. It is a new sci-fi series from the writers of Le Fay and Babylon Working. I'm a fan of Le Fay. And, uh, so, bleh. Bounty hunters Cat and Tusk, they team up on a bounty that is more trouble than it's worth. It's got an awesome style, and, uh, I like the guy named Tusk. He's a walking elephant, and Cat is a girl with cat ears and all that fun stuff. So, check it out. It's about aliens. Bounty Hunters in Space, really cool stuff. Lethal Challengers, cat number one, is on Indiegogo. I don't know how Indiegogos work. They seem to never end. So check it out on Indiegogo. No idea when it ends. OBS, Vampire Soldat, number one, is on Indiegogo also. And this is also from the same team that brought you uh, Le Fay and Lethal Challengers cat and Love University, all that fun stuff. Uh, so... The OBS team are called to investigate a derelict hospital ship that is infested with bloodthirsty monsters. Um, yeah, I love good vampire story. This one is also drawn by Carola Borelli, who is doing the uh, Deadliest Bouquet and Destiny New York. Check it out. Um, OBS Vampire Soldat number one on the Indiegogo Tell Who Knows When. Carbon and Silicon is one story. And Shangri-La is the other story. Two stories right now by Matthew Bablett. Two sci-fi takes from celebrated visionary graphic novelist presented in a gallery quali quality hardcover and slipcase. So, Carbon and Silicon is about two androids crisscrossing the planet for centuries in search of themselves and each other while citizen civilization is crumbling around them. Shangri-La is about... Mankind has abandoned a desolate Earth to live in space and prepares to take the next evolutionary step. Sounds like uh, Wally, -E, but without the robots. Um, so yeah, check out Carbon and Silicon and Shangri-La, Shangri-La, 
on Kickstarter right now until June 18th. It is 9 by 12. That is a really cool one. 272 pages. I love that format. Operation Eclipse number 3. That's one I'm backing as well. So Eclipse is the name of the character and he continues his war on the criminal underworld of St. Louis as he gets closer to finding the one responsible for all the vi most of the villainy in St. Louis. I don't know how many pages it is. It's almost funded. And Operation Eclipse 3 is, uh, well, in the last issue we just got introduced to a female character who's a lot like Eclipse. Wonder where that's going to go. Ho hopefully we find out in issue 3. Right now, Operation Eclipse 3 on Kickstarter till June 24th. Michael Turner's Fathom, The Core, is on Kickstarter right now. A brand new 40-page historic Fathom event. Perfect jumping on point for new readers. Um, so yeah, Fathom came out in 1998. Michael Turner, uh, it was a big deal when uh, I was collecting comics. Uh, it was right about the time when I got married to my wife Annie. And uh, so it, yeah, I remember going to the comic shop uh, a lot when we were first married, picking up Fathom every week and uh, getting it from my hold. And man, I was really sad. I think it was 2006, Michael Turner died. And it, it was really sad. Uh, I just, I, he was a young guy. He was, I think he was my age. And so to hear that a creator uh, my age could die in 2006, which I wasn't very old then, uh, it's just nuts. Um, anyway, so Michael Turner's Fathom continues to go on through Aspen Comics, and uh, the team working on this, their artwork, look, artwork looks awesome, and it's amazing that it keeps going. I'm, I'm excited to see where it's going, how it continues, and uh, anyway, check out Michael Turner's Fathom, the core, on Kickstarter right now until June 30th. Not So Fair Tales, a fractured fairy tale anthology. Like I said, I'm getting into anthologies lately, so I back this one, and I love fairy tales. I'm a sucker for fairy tales. As you know, I make a Peter Pan the Vampire comic. So, which, hey guys, why didn't you hit me up? Say, hey, uh, you got a comic you want to throw into our Not So Fair Tales? Anyway, that's beside the point. Sorry about that. Getting a little sidetracked. Not So Fair Tales. A Fractured Fairy Tale Anthology is on Kickstarter right now till June 30th. This is an anthology of classic fairy tales with a little twist. They're reimagined in the modern time, which that's also what my Peter Pan does. And uh, this is a tribute to fairy tales of all kinds. 172 pages in hard cra hardcover edition. Uh, with a foreword by Tyler James of Comics Launch. Tyler James, he's awesome. I listen to the podcast any chance I get, mostly on my drives to work or while I'm working in the yard. And uh, yeah, really good stuff. Um, Not So Fair Tales, a fractured fairy tale anthology. Can't wait to see how this anthology is. Can't wait to see what this hardback looks like. And uh, it is on Kickstarter until June 30th. Deadbeats number two. As you know, Deadbeats is from the same company, A Wave Blue World, that did the Maybe Someday I just reviewed. And uh, Deadbeats 2 London Calling is a musical anthology. So uh, take music and horror, blend them together with a bunch of different creators and their own takes on what those topics are, and this is what you get. 160 page full color music themed horror comics centered around the curiosities for sale at one particular record store, managed by an enigmatic person named the shopkeeper. So check out Deadbeats 2 London Calling on Kickstarter right now until July 1st. Cypher, oh, so the Cypher Team, which I just got in the mail, uh, yeah, they had a Kickstarter running, but uh, they got canceled, so I'm gonna just move on. Hopefully when, by the time I read that, the Kickstarter is back up and running. I can't wait to see from you guys uh, the new Kickstarter. And Planar Jane 1 through 3 is coming to Kickstarter soon. It's not on there yet, or I'd be back in it right now and telling you all about it. 
Planar Jane is a comic I reviewed last week. Really good stuff. Black, white, and red comic about a teenager who becomes a hitman for hire. So that's cool stuff. Broken Face Comics. Coming to Planar Jane 1 through 3, coming to Kickstarter soon. Mask 1 through 3 is a cyberpunk thriller comics, forbidden technology, alien magic, government conspiracies, and a ma masked vigilante who plots revolution is also coming to Kickstarter soon. So be on the lookout for that. I will give you the link so that you can be notified when they launch. Uh, what time is it? Okay, so, yeah, uh, as I mentioned, uh, listen to Comics Launch on your Stitcher or Apple devices. That's I listen to it on my Stitchers. It's a podcast. And I've been listening to a new one called The Writer's Block. Well, it's not it, new, it's new to me. The Writer's Block is also on Stitcher. I listen to it, it's a podcast. That's what I've been listening to lately. I listen to a lot more, but I won't tell you about them all today. Just one or two per week. Okay. And, oh yeah, uh, let's see, what have I watched lately? Love, Death, and Robots, the second season was pretty good. I enjoyed that. And uh, Your Name, I finally watched Your Name on disc from Netflix. That was pretty cool. Uh, really good story, although I didn't like how the main characters kept forgetting things too easily. That part is the only thing that bugged me about that show. Great artwork. Great uh, story. And now what else we got? Patreon. So now I come to the part where I talk about Patreon. Uh, I have not got any Patreon backers yet. But as soon as I do, this is the format that I'm going to be doing my Patreon. So I've had a Patreon for a while. And with no idea what to do with it. <clears throat> and I finally figured something out. How I'm going to do my Patreon. Um, so... There's really no insider uh, secrets to what I'm doing and whatnot, but anyway, here's how I'm doing it. I'm going to do a $5 tier that is VIP members, and this is how I'll do it. I will say your name if you're a $5 tier, and I will show uh, your social media handles. So this is an example. Mike Shea, who makes Miskatonic High Comics, can be found at Miskatonic High on Twitter and Instagram. Gold member tier, which is going to be $3 a tier. Here's an example of how I'll do a gold member. I'll say, I'll print out one of these with your name on it and show your social, me social media handles. Pat Shand, who makes Destiny New York and a bunch of other comics I like. There's his Twitter handles and Instagram. And silver members, this will be a $1 tier. If you want to support me a dollar a month, become a silver member. Here's the example, Charlie Stickney, silver member. Here's his Twitter and Instagram handles. And of course, just for kicks, because I print off these on fours, I made a Gary Brantner. That's me. And that's how you can find me as Rentnarb on Twitter and Rentnarb on Facebook. So, if you'd like to support me on the Patreons and be shouted out at the end of each video with me showing up a card like that, uh, hit me up on Patreon. Support me for $5, $3, or $1 a month and get shouted out on every episode that I make. Thank you for watching Gary Brantner of Renton Arp Studios. Goodbye.